Google's VO3 is transforming AI video creation. It's pitched as a game changer for generating cinematic, realistic, and even surrealistic videos. But does it live up to the hype, or does it fall flat? In this video, I'll dive deep into what VO3 can actually do, and share my best tips to help you master its updated features. Make sure you stick around to the end. You won't want to miss how to get the most out of this powerful tool. Now to get started with VO3, you'll need to sign up for Google AI. You can try things out with a one month free trial of Google AI Pro, which provides access to VO3 through Gemini and with Flow. Now I'll start off by using Flow, create a new project and use text to video. What sets VO3 apart is the ability to generate talking characters with accurately lip sync speech without the need to add any external audio files. You can do this by writing out the dialogue in your text prompt. And if you have multiple characters, you can name them and write out the speech on separate lines. So I'll enter a prompt for a man being chased in a desert by a giant lizard, and I'll give him some lines that I'll put in quotations. But for this prompt, I'll put most of the focus on detailing camera position, camera movements, and the character actions. But before generating the clip, I'll need to go into the settings and make sure the output is set to VO3, as the current default setting is VO2. There's also the option to generate up to four outputs per prompt, but I'll stick with one. So here's the first result. Why does this keep happening to me? The overall look of the clip in terms of the man's movement, the look of the gigantic lizard, the desert setting, and the lighting is pretty good. The man delivered his line well, the camera is following along as I wanted, and the sound effects are great. But the man doesn't look over his shoulder, which I mentioned in the prompt. And while the lizard's movements are generally good, it comes to a near stop halfway through the clip, and doesn't really feel like it's chasing after the man. In my second attempt, I simplified the prompt, being a little less descriptive with details like the camera movements and position. And I made a change from the gigantic lizard charging after the man to the man being chased by the lizard. Why does this keep happening to me? It does start out a little awkwardly with the giant lizard lunging into the frame going past the man. But as for the man delivering his lines, the clip works pretty well. Interestingly, this video includes the man glancing over his shoulder at the lizard, which I removed from the prompt. And there's this detail of the lizard bumping into the man, which kind of works. Now, this is something that comes up on occasion, where overall, characters will follow the prompts, but something is just a little off with the interaction between the two figures. Like this video I generated of a woman in a trench coat walking towards a park bench to meet with an undercover agent. We have five minutes, make them count. The woman follows the directions in the prompt, but she stops suddenly, getting a little too close to the man, and then leans back a little. It's almost like when an actor oversteps their mark. But as for the setting in the park, the lighting, and the general background atmosphere, all of that turned out really, really well. I did notice a couple of morphing glitches with the kids playing in the background, but it's barely noticeable. Now, just to go back to generating speech for a moment, if you don't have specific dialogue for a character, you can also simply give a general sense of what you want the character to say. So, for example, I created this prompt for a 1980s heavy metal band singing a song about artificial intelligence, and this is what I got. Silicon mind, electric heart, a future built to tear apart. In my examples so far, I've kept the character descriptions to a minimum, but if you do want to get more specific with age, skin tone, body type, hair color and length, or a number of other characteristics, you can include those details in the prompt to get a more uniform result across multiple generations. So I created a prompt for a mountain climber described as a rugged athletic man in his late 20s with short, messy brown hair, wearing a bright red climbing harness, a light blue technical shirt, and gray climbing pants. Now this worked pretty well in generating a more consistent look for this character through multiple videos. You can also use famous characters to generate a specific look, like making a character appear similar to Indiana Jones. At least they're not snakes. 
And with these clips I generated, there is a pretty high degree of similarity between them. It's worth noting that if you prompt VO3 to generate certain well-known characters, it may reject your request for copyright and intellectual property reasons. Instead, you can specify that your character look similar to famous characters, or describe in detail their character traits. This is where ChatGPT or another chatbot can come in handy in providing a quick, descriptive write-up. Now, if you're looking to conserve your credits and worried that you'll have to generate too many text-to-video clips in order to get one usable clip, you might want to try the frames-to-video feature. With frames-to-video, you can first generate a still image from a text prompt, and then once you've settled on your image, you can convert that still into a video. So I created a few images in flow of a boy pulling a sword out of a stone in a medieval setting. But in all the images, the boy is looking straight ahead, which does doesn't quite look right. I then created a new prompt including the instruction that the boy is looking down at the sword as he pulls it out, and the images come out much better. Now when creating still images within Flow, it's not VO3 generating them. Google's Imagine is being utilized, and I notice that I can keep creating these still images, up to four at a time, without using any credits. In fact, you don't even need a paid account to create these images in Flow. You just need to be logged in with your free Google account. Account. So something to keep in mind. You can also upload an image of your own to start with, but whether uploading an image or generating one with inflow, there are some limitations with frames to video. As of now, frames to video can only create VO3 clips with sound effects, no speech. What I've also noticed with creating in frames to video is that the video seems to have more of a 2D image in 3D space feel, like in this clip of the boy pulling the sword from the stone. I think it looks pretty good, but the movement doesn't seem to have the same depth as when created as a text-to-video clip. Flow also has a number of helpful capabilities that are currently only available with VO2. This includes frames to video first to last, which allows you to determine your starting frame and end frame. Extend provides the ability to extend a video clip you've already generated by analyzing the last frames of your current video generation, and then generates new content that smoothly flows from that point. Now, one additional feature that does currently work with VO3 is Jump To. It's accessible inside of Flow's Scene Builder for creating transitions between different shots while maintaining visual consistency. So I'll start off with a clip of a knight riding a horse. We shall fight to the end! The end result is pretty good, but I'd like to add a shot of the knight talking to an army of knights, also on horseback. So I can use jump to to achieve a consistent look between the two images. Now, consistency between images is one of the key features that generative AI services have been striving to improve. Google Flow's attempt at this is ingredients to video, which allows you to upload reference images that will be recreated in your generated videos, helping to get greater consistency across multiple shots. But the issue with ingredients to video, for the moment, is it's only available with VO2 when subscribed to the Google AI Ultra plan. And the Ultra plan is not cheap. The regular price is $250 per month, providing 12,500 credits, enough to generate 125 full quality VO3 videos per month. Currently, there's a promotion price of $125 per month for the first three months, but even that's still pricey compared to services like Kling AI, which you can check out by clicking on the link in the description below. You can also go for the cheaper Google AI Pro plan at $20 a month, which provides 1,000 credits, meaning 10 full quality VO3 videos per month. But there is a way to generate more VO3 clips as part of your Google plan. In addition to your credits in Flow, you can also generate VO3 videos using Google's Gemini. With a Google AI Pro plan, I was able to create another 10 text-to-video clips within Gemini, with the number resetting after two weeks. Overall, the quality of the VO3 clips in Gemini held up well, but something I noticed with a number of those clips is they came out with a more video game look, whereas within Flow, the VO3 clips had more of a realistic look. 
Now, you can definitely get videos in Flow to take on a variety of different visual styles, but I found by default, Flow would more consistently give a realistic look. So if you're looking to get that style in Gemini, I'd suggest adding a term like cinematic realism to your prompts. Now, in the days I've spent testing VO3, I've just noticed an update that has added the ability to create VO3 fast videos using text to video. This allows for the creation of videos with speech and sound effects with one-fifth of the credits. VO3 is definitely a powerful tool for producing comedic clips, visual effect sequences, promotional material, and reenactment scenes. While there are still some features that need improvement, the ability to create talking characters directly from text prompts is a significant step forward. What power have I unleashed? As this technology continues to improve, we'll likely see its use increase even more. Now, if you found this helpful, hit that subscribe button, and you can also check out more of my videos on AI tools right here.